Hi, everybody. The top stories from Columbia for this Wednesday, August 20th. The Fiscalia orders a probe of political scandal involving a minister and the current and former aide to the president. The Minister of Social Protection, Diego Palacio, has been implicated in the Yetis political scandal. Yetis Medina is a former member of Congress convicted of bribery and corruption who claims President Uribe's second term was bought and paid for with political favors. The Fiscalia, or Prosecutor's Office here in Bogota, has ordered testimony from Minister Palacio and the President's current and former General Secretaries, Bernardo Moreno and Alberto Velasquez. They'll testify whether they gave money or promised favors to Yetis Medina to win her support for a change to the Colombian Constitution back in 2004 that gave Alvaro Uribe another term of office. The Minister says he has nothing to hide and says his testimony will help prove Yetis Medina is a liar. In other political news, the Fiscalia has ordered the conditional liberty for the cousin of President Alvaro Uribe, former Senator Mario Uribe. He's been held in the Pakota jail for the last few months while prosecutors have probed his alleged ties to the paramilitaries. As part of his conditional release, until it's decided whether he'll stand trial, the former senator will not be able to leave Colombia. You'll remember he tried to seek asylum in Costa Rica rather than turn himself in. Simone Trinidad, a former member of the FARC, now serving time in the United States, made a special appearance in a Colombian courtroom via satellite. A judge in the U.S. granted a request by the Colombian government allowing Trinidad to give testimony in Colombian proceedings against him, where he faces murder, kidnapping, and drug charges. The U.S. has also granted permission for 14 other paramilitary chiefs who were extradited to the U.S. to testify in their Colombian trials via satellite. You've heard of drug mules who try to sneak dope out of the country by hiding it in their suitcases or even swallowing it. Well, they caught one at Bogota's airport the other day with ecstasy taped to his legs. The nervous 29-year-old passenger is going through security on his way to Panama when the cops at the International Concourse thought he was acting a little strange. They searched his luggage and found nothing, so they decided to search his body and found 2,000 ecstasy pills taped to his legs. The police say he was going to be paid two millones de pesos for acting as a mule. A risky rescue happening in the mountains of Santander after a bus accident. The wreck happened on a dangerous road between the towns of San Andres and Malaga. The first responders trying to get 23 people trapped in that bus that rolled down the mountain into a wooded ravine some 80 meters down below. The crash site really difficult to reach. Police there say seven people were killed in the accident. Business news now. Colombia's peso ends at its weakest level since the end of June, down 0.6 percent. Analysts at Interbolsa say it's a reaction to the, the depreciation of the Brazilian real. The peso ended at 1887 to the U.S. dollar. Here in Bogota, we have a lot of long canals for rainwater and runoff from the mountains. One such drainage line is in Suba, and it passes by a pond, or what we say is an humidal in Spanish. A company was hired to keep that umidal clean, but when the contract expired, well, the trash started to pile up. Well, now the neighbors are taking action. RCN's Efren Arce has the story. Hi, Brian. Today we have a human interest story that I'm sure all the ecological people, like yourself, is going to love. Right now we are in a wetland in the locality of Suva in northwest Bogota. What you're seeing is about... 1,500 students from eight different schools that are cleaning up this wetland. The problem started when a company that had the contract to keep this wetland clean and uh, give some maintenance to it, uh, the, comp the contract ended, and there was nobody in charge to do it. The community cried out for help, and the ecological police made arrangements with these eight schools to keep clean this uh, wetland in the middle of the city. They have cleaned over two miles of this uh, along the river that is here in Suwa. They have cleaned over, they had pulled out over 800 pounds of garbage, but the job is not done yet. They still have a long way to go, and all the students are very committed, and they say they're, they're not going to stop until the job is done. Reporting from Northwest Bogotá, the locality of Suwa for RCN News in English, I'm Efrem Arce. Back to you, Brian. Okay, thanks very much, Efrem. A beauty queen scandal is happening in North de Santander. Let's get the scoop right now. RCN Entertainment reporter Laura Acuna is here with the cheese maze. Laura. Yes, thank you, Brian. Well, contestants are crying full after the big patient in Cúcuta. Right now, each department is selecting their señorita to represent them in the National Miss Colombia patient in November. In Norte Santander, they picked a winner, but just hours before she was crowned, the woman who was the favorite to win quit. 
She left in a storm of controversy because of rumors the winner was already decided, even before the contestants were on the wrong way. The winner ended up being in uh, Casas Ontiveros, the very same woman the rumors suggest was already selected. Now all of the contestants are upset, saying the competition was rich. No one said it was easy being beautiful. For RCN News in English, I'm Laura Cunha. Brian, back to you. Thanks, Laura. We appreciate that report. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Muy Buenos Dias. Now, residents of Monteria are worried one of the most beautiful city parks in the country is on the verge of extinction. The city is the home to the Parque de la Ronda del Sinu, a gorgeous place built by the community five years ago. Even President Uribe has used the park as an example of great urban green spaces and invited members of the U.S. Congress to pay the park a visit. Well, the park's maintenance is paid for by a special city tax. However, a court has now ruled that tax is illegal, and the mayor's office says it doesn't have the money to pay for the park's upkeep. So without the funding to keep things beautiful, residents are worried the pride and joy of Monteria will wither away. So the question, will this park be saved? And the answer is, we just don't know. That's going to do it for RCN News in English on this Wednesday, August 20th. I'm Brian Andrews, and we're bringing Columbia to the world.